Hi everybody, Angie back for another Barista Basics video. Before I get into today's topic, of course I need to make my disclaimer that any opinions stated in my videos are my own. I'm not here to represent Starbucks or any other corporation. This hair is bugging me. Or impede on any of these companies, intellectual properties or trademarks. Of course, as we all know at this point, my videos are just meant for fun and educational purposes. So with all of that said, we can go ahead and get into today's topic, which is all about tea. So I thought this would be the next logical step for um, the Barista Basic series, because we sort of have, at least for now, concluded our discussion of espresso and espresso beverages. Um, so I thought moving into teas would be the next logical step, because that's another popular uh, coffee house beverage. More than that though, I have been noticing, especially recently, that there is this misconception that different kinds of teas come from different plants, which is not true. So I thought um, not only would this video be an interesting topic and the next logical step, but also a pertinent one as well. So with all of that said, we can go ahead and actually get into our topic. So, um, as I just stated, all of the T's above the, uh, the blue line I have drawn there all originate from the same plant, which is called the Camellia sinensis. Botanists out there, please don't kill me. <laughs> I apologize if I butchered that name. But they all come from this plant, which is more commonly known as simply the tea plant. And so the tea plant uh, can find its origins in um, Eastern and Southeastern Asia, as well as the Indian subcontinent. However, nowadays they are grown and cultivated all over the world in regions that are tropical or subtropical. Regarding how the tea plant itself actually looks, it is an evergreen shrub um, or like a small tree kind of that um, produces these flowers. Um, they are, oh my gosh, I totally had, oh, um, I apologize. The flowers are um, sort of like a yellowy white color. Um, they're very beautiful. I looked up some pictures um, to, you know, because I was curious and they're really pretty. Um, anyways, so that is a little bit about the tea plant itself. Now we can go ahead and get into the meat of today's topic, which is the differences between our different kinds of teas. And so as you can see with our second bullet here, the main difference between um, these teas lies in the level of oxidation. So as we can see on, this would be the left that you guys are seeing. Yeah, the left, I have a little scale here of the most to the least amount of oxidation. And so in that order, we have our black tea, our oolan tea, our green tea, and our white tea. Now, sort of um, another char characteristic of teas that goes hand in hand with oxidation is caffeine level. Now this is a general rule. This isn't, you know, this doesn't necessarily apply to every single um, tea, but generally the longer the tea is oxidized for, the more caffeine it has. So again, speaking generally, black tea would have the most caffeine, whereas our white tea would have the least. So we can go ahead and talk about the specifics uh, for each one of these teas now, starting with our black tea. And so as we can see, black tea is oxidized fully for the longest amount of time. Sorry, this hair is just in my eye and super bugging me. <laughs> um, our black tea is fully oxidized. And so this makes sense if you consider what oxidation does to our tea leaves. So not only does it result in our tea having sort of a more, um, I guess like pronounced flavor to it, a more bold flavor, it also results in the tea leaves darkening significantly, which explains why our black tea is the darkest. So, like I said, our tea leaves, after they are harvested, are oxidized fully, 
and then they are simply dried. Now our oolong tea goes through the same process that our black tea does, except as we can see here, it is oxidized for only half the time. So that is why um, black tea and oolong tea are pretty similar. Now, moving on to our green tea though, this is where we see a greater divergence. Can we see that? There we go. I think that helped the lighting a little bit. Um, our green tea is where we see um, a greater difference come into play. And this main difference comes from the fact that our tea leaves are steamed just a few hours after they are harvested, meaning that they experience little to no oxidation. And so, of course, this implies that steaming halts our oxidation process. So after they are steamed, they are then rolled and dried, and of course, um, packaged in such a way, you know, for example, in tea bags for us to consume. Now, um, an interesting uh, sort of offshoot of green tea is matcha. So you may have um, seen or heard of matcha before. It has a bit of infamy surrounding it. <laughs> a lot of people um, say it tastes like grass, which is kind of true, to be honest, but I personally like it. Um, so no shade on matcha, but um, yeah, it's not um, super, there's not a, a lot of common knowledge regarding matcha. And so to provide some insight in that, I'm going to explain uh, the slight differences between green tea and matcha tea. So matcha is green tea that during the um, final like three to four weeks of growth, they are grown or they are shaded rather. So our original green tea leaves are just left um, in the sun all day, you know, until they are ready to be harvested. Whereas our matcha tea for the final three to four weeks are shaded. And so this shading process uh, surprisingly actually increases the caffeine content of our matcha, which of course explains why matcha typically is more caffeinated. And the processing for our matcha is a little bit different too, as opposed to um, drying the leaves and sort of just leaving them as this loose kind of leaf, they are um, pulverized into a powder. And that's why whenever you get a matcha beverage, typically this powder is just um, gonna be suspended in you know, either hot water or milk or whatever, as opposed to our green tea leaves, which as we all know, are steeped in traditionally a tea bag. So that is a little um, interesting tidbit about matcha and how it relates to green tea. Now, moving on to our final tea um, for this little list we have here, our white tea. This goes through a very similar process to green tea, except the um, leaves that are used for white tea are specifically much younger. Um, white tea can also sometimes use very young um, flowering buds. And so these young leaves are uh, steamed just like our green tea, um, but they are not rolled before they are dried. So that is, yeah, that's all the information I have regarding our traditional um, teas. But like I said, I thought it would also be valuable to mention our herbal tea, which is a bit of a misnomer. I am not sure if herbal tea is where this misconception of tea, different teas coming from different plants may originate from, but um, our herbal tea, like I said, is a misnomer because it does not actually come from the tea plant. Instead, herbal tea is a combination of various herbs, spices, flowers, basically any other plant material. Um, and of course, you know, the combination of these is endless and can vary, which results in different um, flavors, of course. Um, but all of these guys are simply just steeped in hot water to produce our herbal tea. 
As a result, herbal teas do not have any caffeine in them because they don't come from our tea plant. Um, and yeah, that sort of was an abrupt end, I apologize, but I actually think that is going to be it for the video. I can go ahead and just give a quick little review. So all of our teas, besides our herbal teas, come from the same plant. The difference lies primarily in the level of oxidation. Our black tea is oxidized for the longest amount of time, or yeah, for the longest amount of time, whereas um, our white tea on the opposite end of the spectrum is undergoes no oxidation. Um, yeah, so I actually think with that little review over, that is going to be it for the video. I hope that you guys enjoyed the video, of course. I hope that you learned something even more importantly. I hope that this video was able to clear up any misconceptions about, um, you know, tea origins. Um, and yeah, I hope, like I said, well, like I've said in previous videos, if you're in school, I hope that you're having a good semester. And even if you're not, I just hope you're having a great day, having a great start to 2020. I can't believe it's almost February. <laughs> January has just flown by. Um, but yeah, I hope that um, everybody's 2020 is off to a great start. And I hope that you guys, again, like I said, enjoyed the video. And I hope that you guys have a great day. Thank you so much.